Hi, Happy New Year and welcome to ECHL Week. Before we get started today, a shout out to our friends in France, Germany and the United Kingdom, as well as a dozen other countries around the world and the United States and Canada. People in all those countries watched our first show and we were very pleased about that. As far as today's show is concerned, we've got a great one lined up for you. We've got a featured game with lots of goals, some real action, a big crowd. We're going to have an interview with a Western Conference team president who's going to give us the lowdown on his franchise. And wiener dogs and ice hockey. You don't hear those words in the same sentence too often. But we're going to put them together today, and it's going to be fun. The top story today, the ECHL Hall of Fame and the 2013 class. Four inductees are going to be inducted into the hall at a luncheon in their honor later this month in Loveland, Colorado, held in conjunction with the ECHL All-Star Game. Dave Kravich began playing in the ECHL as a rookie in 1991-92 with the Cincinnati Cyclones. He went on to play 516 games over nine seasons with the Cyclones, Birmingham Bulls, and Mobile Mystics. He ranks third all-time among ECHL defensemen with 123 goals and 467 points, while ranking fourth among blue liners with 344 assists. Twice he scored at least 20 goals, and in 1995-96, he led the expansion Mobile team in scoring with 74 points in 65 games. Kravich played in three ECHL All-Star games. Mark Magliardini is the second goaltender to join the Hall of Fame. He's the league's all-time leader with 25 career shutouts and ranks second behind 2008 Hall of Famer Nick Batusi with 217 career wins. He's third on the goalie list with 366 appearances. He saw time with the Columbus Chill, Florida Everblades, Louisiana Ice Gators, Richmond Renegades, and Las Vegas Wranglers. Six times in his ECHL career, he won at least 20 games, and he's tied for the league's all-time mark with two seasons of 30 or more wins. Steve Popes joins former teammate Olaf Kolzig as the second inductee in the developmental player category. Popes began his pro career in the ECHL with Hampton Roads in 1991, scoring 28 points in 55 regular season games and adding five points in 14 playoff games, helping the Admirals to claim their second straight Riley Cup title. Popes made his NHL debut with Washington in 1995. He appeared in 307 NHL contests with the Capitals, Chicago, Pittsburgh, and St. Louis. Popes played in 498 career games in the American Hockey League. And Darren Schwartz arrived in the ECHL during the league's second season. He played eight years in Johnstown, Winston-Salem, Wheeling, and Tallahassee. Schwartz made his biggest mark in the ECHL during the Wheeling Thunderbirds first season in 1992-93, when he scored a team record 62 goals in 62 games that season, making him one of just eight players in league history to score at least 60 goals in a season. Schwartz was MVP of the league's first All-Star game and was named to the All-ECHL first team three times. The Reading Royals got off to a lousy start this season. They only won one of their first seven games and it didn't look like things were going anywhere. But now they're leading the Eastern Conference. An 11 game winning streak and a 10-0-1 run that they're on right now heading into 2013 has made all the difference. But what happened? Why? Let's talk to Yannick Tifu, the captain of the Royals, see what he has to say. We're going to talk a lot all year. I think every time we have an interview, but we're going to talk about the one in five start. Uh, I think we, uh, we have a lot of leadership in that room. I don't think I have to go around every player, but a lot of those guys want some championship. And uh, we just had one today. And uh, um, I mean, we just looked ourselves in the mirror and had a great meeting in Wheeling. And from there, we just got to move on. I mean, uh, some guys want to play in the American Hockey League. Some guy, it's their last chance to maybe win a cup. So I think we made a commitment. And right now, it's doing good, but we didn't win the cup yet. So we just got to follow. December, November was a great month, but January is coming, February, and then the playoffs are coming soon. So just got to keep going the same win, take one game at a time. 
especially you need guys who with character and, and guys who also won championships to, that know what how to play good defensively and do the right things at the at key moments. And we have a lot of those guys. What we're focused on lately is is um, limiting our bad penalties and uh, not playing with too so much emotion that uh, you know that's taking us out of the game. It's pretty nice to be winning games like this, and you know it starts just become a mentality. Like geez, you know you go. And, you just know the guy next to you is going to do his job and, and everybody's going to work hard and be pulling on the rope. And it's awesome. I mean, it's a lot of fun and we got to keep it going because it's still got a lot of hockey left. Everybody's getting better. Everybody wants to get a chance to win. And it's a great year this year with the lockout. Um, I mean, it's a chance for a lot of young guys to play in that league it's, and, and, and get better because you got so much talent on every team. So it's a fun year for everybody. So like I said, we're just focusing on us right now. And I mean, I think we're doing pretty well. It's extremely important. Our guys accept their roles. They know when they're uh, we're up by goals, our, our grinding line or our shutdown line is going to be out there for the most of the part, and uh, the offensive guys are going to have to sit back and uh, you know allow those guys to play those tough minutes for us. And, and we've done a great job, I think, with our with our character guys or our guys that are playing defensive minutes uh, have done a great job for us. I think we're a team that stick together right now, and that's what bring some 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 uh, some chemistry on the ice. And guys are love to play for each other. You know, we're a big family now, and it took the one and five start to get to that point. But I wish it didn't take that. But right now we're at the point that we're all together, and like I said, uh, we're just happy with the wins every day. Hat tricks happen, but only once in the 24 years of the ECHL up to this season. Had a player ever scored a shorthanded hat trick in one game? That was Jamie Hicks of Birmingham 15 years ago. But it's happened again. Chad Costello, the Colorado Eagles, the leading scorer in the league, did it just a few weeks ago. Let's watch history being made as Kevin McGlue, Ryan Bach, and Les Borsheim describe the action. Hustling back as O'Keefe out of his net to hold it up for the Wranglers. Turns it over. Canisto looking at front, spins, sends it over, shot, goal! Chad Costello, sure-handed goal! That'll work. one nothing, Colorado. Well, now you're going to fix the fact that Oscar is out of this hockey game for now. Hope to see him back, but Colorado responds on a big sports check, getting the goaltender deep to turn it over, and Costi comes in on a quick little wraparound. Gives them a little, how's she going? It's one nothing Colorado on a short-handed goal. Colorado will pry it free, set ahead, clean break. Here comes Costello, short-handed, shot again. And front shot. Goal! Back-to-back short-handed goal for Chad Costello. Showed up in Colorado. 9 4 left for the second period. Wow. While you talk about another highlight reel goal, watch this. Forehand, backhand, forehand. O'Keefe is in the back of the net before the puck is. And Chad Costello makes it the 2 0 hockey game. Looking to go upstairs. Ninth down by Colorado. They got a two on one coming short handed. Left wing side. Canisto racing in. In front. Back door. Look shot. Hat trick. Chad Costello. Three short handed goals. You got to be kidding me. Wow. What you got? As thick as hot, this Chad Costello, not only even strength as of late, now it's come short-handed. He gets his third goal tonight, the Eagles a 5 nothing lead. Yeah, what can you say about that? That's got to be some sort of record. The East Coast, one guy that three goals, three short-handed goals in one game. Not long after Costello had his history-making event, he was signed to a professional tryout agreement and is currently playing with Bridgeport in the American Hockey League. Coming up, our featured game, and it was held in a current NHL arena. That's next on ECHL Week.
In celebration of its 25th anniversary, the ECHL, North America's premier AA hockey league, held a contest to find the league's number one fan. Judging was based on videos submitted by fans through each member team. Here's one of those videos. I'm Mike Benton for Thunder Vision, and we're in search for Stockton's number one fan. I'm Garrett Hunt, and Corey is Stockton Thunder's number one fan. I'm Ryan Constant, and Katie is Stockton Thunder's number one fan. What? You want to go, bro? Let's go! Yeah. Oh! Corey and Katie are clearly Stockton's number one fan. I'm Garrett Hunt, and me and my abs approve this message. The winner of the number one fan contest receives a trip to the 2013 ECHL All-Star Game in Loveland, Colorado. Voting for the 25th anniversary contest is complete, and the winning entry will be shown next time on ECHL Week. Our featured game today takes us to the HP Pavilion in San Jose. It's a current NHL arena, and it's the first time an ECHL game was played at a current NHL arena in 10 years. Stockton and San Francisco played in front of a big crowd, the largest in the league this year, and there was a lot going on. So let's listen to the highlights with Jason Lockhart and Brett Hedekin of the Bulls Broadcast Network giving us the details. 3-11 into the first period of a scoreless game between the Bulls and the Stockton Thunder, and now we are going to have a fight. Dylan King and Tegan Zahn, they drop the mitts, they drop the helmets, and they're squaring off. King lighting up Zahn early on. King falls down for a moment, gets back up, gets rid of the elbow pad, and they both try to throw haymakers. King connecting with the right. Zahn hanging on right now, both with free hands, the two men tumble down, and that will do it. Evac still controlling, in behind with it. Drops it off, knifed away from him. Loose puck, Morrison feeds back to the point. Tam, wrist shot, scores! Michael Tam, the Bulls lead 1-0 here at HP. That's his first professional goal for Michael Tam. Congratulations. Flew in today, arrived around 3 p.m., just early enough to hop on the bus. Rayala turns, his shot scores. Here he is, he's on the top of the circle, he switches, pulls it on his backhand into his forehand. Just a quick little shot, top shelf, upper right-hand corner. Tie the game. Time of that one, 9.53. Thunder going on their third power play of the game. They've had all three men advantage opportunities. You got to think they will even up eventually. Thunder in, score. Slap shot from the top of the circle. And it is a 2-1 Stockton lead. Go first. We, we don't know. Like, oh, here's another scrap. And now another fight. Jamie Devan, Cameron Abney, they have dropped the mitts, they have dropped the elbow pads, and they have dropped their helmets. The two squaring off in the offensive zone for the Bulls. Devan getting his right hand free, going over the top against Abney, who is hanging on. Now Abney getting his right hand free. Devan trying to go undercut, and he lands one on Abney, who goes down in a heap. And Devan looks like he's got some bloody knuckles. Uh, maybe they got to change that in the future. That's what happens when you have a Canadian coach. Did a lot of recruiting up in Ontario. Quit one of those many Ontario natives. Wrist shot in, scores! Chris Bellin with a twisted wrister, and the Bulls have tied it up at two. Well, Quit did it just at a dynamic job coming across the blue line. Made a nice little offensive forehand, backhand move. Little will carry it in deep. The defenseman in behind, looking out in front. Turnaround shot, and he scores. Mike Little just walked all the way around the net. Nobody touching him. 
And Heemskirk got a piece, but it trickled over the line. When you Sent in deep by Gabriel Levesque, sporting a full cage out there. Thrown in front, score as given away. The Thunder taking advantage. They lead 4-2. to two. Well, Denny Pepin and, and Heemskirk, just a bad exchange right there. Nobody communicating with each other. Stockton pressing even more now that they have the 4-2 lead with 4.04 remaining. Loose puck in front, rebound, score. And that is Riala's hat trick. Shenzi carries in just on side of the Bulls as they look to set up. Bowers cuts in, wrist shot blocked, poked in behind. Bank back to the right point for Quit. Sends it to the left point. Gimon, wrist shot, in, scores! Sasha Gimon fires it off from the left point. The Bulls back within two. Well, I'm not sure if Bowers can hear me from up here, but that's exactly what finally happened. He gets right in front of the goaltender, Rykard, and just a good shot there, again, by Gimon. Just wrister shot, not real hard, but hard enough to get to the back of the net. Bulls carry in on the right side. Crescenzi goes wide, throws it in front, shot, scores! Alex Tuckerman and the Bulls are back within one. And here he comes on the backside. It was a great little power move. Puts his leg down and just drives to the net. And it looks like Zuckerman or Tuckerman gets it to buries it right there. It's a nice, nice goal, but set up by a great power move by Krushensky. 3.20 remaining in the third period as time begins to be a factor for the Bulls who trail by one. Loose puck side of the net, defensive zone. King stolen off his stick by Abney, drops it off. Bend on the one-timer, broken stick, and the Bulls try to clear it. They give it away. Big shot, man, taken down, backhand, oh. scores Abney, and the Thunder have regained the two-goal advantage. Straight ahead, this might be the best goal you'll see all year. No kidding. It's right after the break on ECHL Week. The Colorado Eagles and the City of Loveland are proud to play host to the 2013 ECHL All-Star Game presented by University of Colorado Health on Wednesday, January 23rd. Come see the league's biggest stars take on the Colorado Eagles at the Budweiser Event Center in beautiful Loveland, Colorado. For information on tickets to all CCM All-Star Week festivities as well as lodging and everything you love in Loveland, visit ECHLAllStarClassic.com. In celebration of its 25th anniversary, the ECHL, North America's premier AA hockey league, held a contest to find the league's number one fan. Judging was based on videos submitted by fans through each member team. Here's one of those videos. Winner of the number one fan contest receives a trip to the 2013 ECHL All-Star Game in Loveland, Colorado. Voting for the 25th anniversary contest is complete, and the winning entry will be shown next time on ECHL Week. From opening night until the Kelly Cup is raised, watch every game of the 2012-13 ECHL season exclusively on AmericaOneSports.com. Catch the action live or on demand. Games available on your PC, Mac, or mobile device. The biggest goals, hardest hits, and spectacular saves all season long can be found only at AmericaOneSports.com, the official broadband broadcaster to the ECHL. In a recent game in Ontario, California, the Reign were hosting the San Francisco Bulls. 
They played through the regulation part of the game. They played through the overtime, and the game was still tied. So they went to the shootout. Rain coach Jason Christie called on Colton Yellowhorn to take a try during the shootout, and what followed was an amazing play. Nathan Barnett describes the action. Well, he started to come. He's sitting on the top of the bench, and now he slowly gets out. A big smile back for his head coach. Fan favorite, Colton Yellowhorn. Yellowhorn is one for two. Across the blue line, moving right. At the hashes, kicks it to himself, spins, shoots, and scores! What a brilliant move by Colton Yellowhorn! Are you kidding me? Oh boy, some nifty magic from the little guy. And the fans, if they didn't love him already, absolutely adore him now. The spinorama move replicating what we've seen from Chicago's Denny Savard and Minnesota's Pierre-Marc Bouchard. Rain win! They stay perfect in the shootout. 3-0 this season, and they beat the Bulls for the seventh time in this year. The rain won that game, and it's safe to say that as people were leaving the arena that night, they probably were remembering Yellowhorn's really sick move. Someone who also appreciated that move, undoubtedly, was the president of the Ontario Rain, Justin Kemp. R.J.R. Yabara caught up with him recently, and they talked about the team and where it fits into the Southern California sports landscape. Justin, you guys have really put together a pretty good franchise here, and it's been awfully successful in a very short period of time. Yeah, we've, uh, we've been very fortunate. We have a great fan base here. We're entering now into our fifth season and have been able to move the needle uh, you know, every single year. Um, we've got a great season ticket base, and uh, you know, that's, that's certainly helped us uh, you know, push that needle year after year. And that's really tough to do when you consider that you are in a market where there are some major league teams with both the Kings and the Ducks. Yeah, definitely. Uh, the beauty of this is we're out here in what's known as the Inland Empire, which you've got about three and a half, four million people out here with virtually nothing else to do. And they have to drive through Ontario to be able to get to L.A. or Orange County. So we have that niche market and uh, we're doing our best to capitalize on it. Obviously, there's a lot of entertainment value because when you look around what happens, the festivities that happen during the game, uh, during intermission, there's a lot happening as far as activities. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, we try and uh, we try and mirror a lot what a lot of other teams in the league do. And uh, obviously, this is a copycat league, like any sports league. Um, you know, you try a few things, see what works, and uh, and just have fun. And that's the beauty of being at this level is you can have a little bit more flexibility to try new things. And there's a fortunate uh, fact that you guys have some great stuff going on in the ice too. I mean, you've had a very, a very good, successful season so far. Yeah, that's definitely uh, also been a been a factor for us and. Um, you know, we've had a couple of couple of lean years here um, in our first uh, in our first five. But as I try and tell people, with a glass half full, half empty is is you know in our first four years, people say, well, you know, missed the playoffs a couple of times in there. And I said, but you know, we won two division titles in four years too. So. With the lockout going on, have you guys gotten maybe a little bit more attention from from the major league fans? Uh, you know, it's helped a little bit in terms of uh, you know a little bit of added media exposure. Um, you know, it definitely helps, you know, having some of the Kings and Ducks fans come out, uh, kind of check it out. You know, they're starved for hockey. In fact, I just met a couple here that drove all the way in from Phoenix. They were starved for hockey, and this was the closest thing to them. So uh, there's definitely been a little bit of an impact, but we're still, I think, seeing, you know, the core of the people that are here are still our own fans. Obviously, what, with what goes on in the ice, what goes on in the arena, what is it that you want the fan to come away with on a, on a night? I just want them to feel like they came here, they got a great value, it was the best thing they could get for their money. Uh, they were entertained from the time that they uh, stepped in the arena to the time they pulled out of the parking lot. Um, and they had a uh, positive experience, whether you're a hockey fan or whether you're just looking for a good night out in the town, uh, there's a little something here for everybody. Up next, a longtime coach talks about his return to the ECHL. Plus, wiener dogs and hockey, perfect together. ECHL Week continues. In celebration of its 25th anniversary, the ECHL, North America's premier AA hockey league, held a contest to find the league's number one fan. Judging was based on videos submitted by fans through each member team. Here's one of those videos.
the winner of the number one fan contest receives a trip to the 2013 ECHL All-Star Game in Loveland, Colorado. Voting for the 25th anniversary contest is complete and the winning entry will be shown next time on ECHL Week. The Colorado Eagles and the City of Loveland are proud to play host to the 2013 ECHL All-Star Game presented by University of Colorado Health on Wednesday, January 23rd. Come see the league's biggest stars take on the Colorado Eagles at the Budweiser Event Center in beautiful Loveland, Colorado. For information on tickets to all CCM All-Star Week festivities, as well as lodging and everything you love in Loveland, visit ECHLAllStarClassic.com. Al Sims has been involved in hockey his entire adult life. He played professionally for 15 years, and a lot of that time was in the NHL with the Boston Bruins, the Hartford Whalers, and the Los Angeles Kings. When he left playing, he got into coaching. has been coaching almost ever since. He started coaching in 1989, and he's been with the Fort Wayne Comets a couple different times during his career. He's won five championships at different minor league levels, and last year, the Fort Wayne Comets won the championship of the Central Hockey League. This year, Fort Wayne, of course, is in the ECHL. And Sims is back in the ECHL for the first time since 2002. I talked to him recently to discuss the transition of moving from one league to another. Well, I think, uh, you know, the league's probably the best it's been in quite a few years because of the lockout of the NHL. Everybody uh, is, is getting pushed down, and uh, it's making the American Hockey League better, the Eastern ECHL better, and, uh, you know, the league's below us better. So, uh, you know, I think it, the transition for us was, uh, you know, we had to get younger, and, uh, you know, we got some younger players in, and uh, we uh, changed about 10 to 12 people on the team, which uh, we hadn't done in the past. So uh, we have a new bunch here, and, uh, you know, uh, so far we've had, uh, we've had some success. You've been in Fort Wayne a few different times during your career at the end as a player and a couple different segments as a coach. I assume you must really like it too. Talk about what makes it such a good town, a good hockey town. Well, I think it's really special, uh, you know, the fact that we have 60 old timers living in Fort Wayne that have played for the Fort Wayne Comets and married girls from Fort Wayne and uh, had their families in Fort Wayne. It's, uh, it speaks a lot about the town. Uh, uh, it's a town that takes care of the hockey players. You're a big fish in a small pond there. And, uh, you know, for me, it's, it's a place I've had success. And, uh, you know, with the Franke family uh, and myself, we won a championship before I went on to the NHL, to Anaheim and San Jose and uh, places like that. And then I came back uh, to Fort Wayne and uh, immediately immediately won three championships and uh, uh, you know which was uh, incredible for for any team to, to win three at the minor league level and then to you know go on to the CHL in the first year uh, it was an adjustment period for us and the second year we won the championship. Talk about the difference and the good things and the bad things about uh, familiarity and, and not so much. Yeah, I think, you know, with Kalamazoo, we've played them, I think, six times or seven times this year. We really know each other very well. And uh, Toledo, the same thing. Uh, we know what to expect from them. But when you go down to Orlando and, and Gwinnett and, and different places, uh, you know, with so many teams in the league, it's very uh, difficult to get good scouting reports on every team. You try to watch uh, watch them play games and get it, gather as much information as you can on teams. But, uh, you know, with uh, the, the amount of teams we have in the UCHL, it's a different beast for us. And I really like the, the fact that we're, you know, in those areas, Toledo, Cincinnati, Kalamazoo, our travel is, is really cut down. Uh, the rivalry's gone way up with these teams. Uh, we already had one with Evansville, and now we got uh, uh, one with Toledo, Cincinnati, and Kalamazoo like we had in the old days. And I think it's, uh, it's just been great for us and, and hopefully great for the league. Any surprises that you've come through or had to deal with as far as um, playing in the ECHL so far this year? I just think the quality of play. Uh, this is probably the best uh, uh, AA league I think I've ever coached in. And, uh, you know, like I said, the NHL uh, lockout has an effect on the quality of play. But, you know, uh, this league is, uh, you know, excellently, excellently officiated. Uh, you know, everybody's very, very professional in this league. And, uh, you know, if you don't show up on a given night, it doesn't matter who you're playing, uh, you're not going to win the hockey game. And uh, we found that out rather quickly in this league that, you know, you can't just show up, throw your stuff on uh, with the Comet logo on and, and, and go out and win. Uh, it really is, a, um, you know, and, and we kind of have a target on our back being ex-champions from a different league and, and coming in here. And, you know, everybody's ready for you every night. They want to make an impression. Uh, uh, we beat the four-way comments. 
Here at ECHL Week, we love talking about hockey and all the stuff that makes hockey great. The highlights, the action, the excitement, and we want to bring that to you. But we also sometimes have to bring you some other fun stuff too. So courtesy of our friends at the Cincinnati Cyclones, we have a great example of wiener dogs and hockey being perfect together. He had long floppy ears, sausage shaped and brown, stubby little legs and belly dragging on the ground. It knows it's me for smelling, where a rabbit might be dwelling, but it won't be there for a long when a wiener dog's around. Now some dogs are hairy, and other dogs are small, but there's only one dog shaped like a Hebrew national. Kielbasa can form, at night they'll keep you warm, their nature's perfect brock. Yes, the wiener dog is hot. Thin little tail, that's in constant motion, big brown eyes, that make for your devotion, Mark. So loud it could disperse a riot crowd You best not make a sound when wiener dogs are around Now a wiener dog's a carnivore which leaves us little doubt That you better watch your back when a wiener dog's about They fish, pork, and fowl and shakes when they can get them So be careful of your hand when you go to pet them Wiener dog, wiener dog Everyone loves a wiener dog To make a long story short and a short story long Everybody sing the wiener dog song Wiener dog, wiener dog Everybody loves a wiener dog To make a long story short and a short story long Everybody sing the wiener dog song Gotta like those dogs, what a lot of fun. That wraps up ECHL Week for today. We appreciate you joining us and implore you to go to our Facebook page and tell us what you think. Until next time, Happy New Year. Make it a good week. Make it an ECHL Week.